So, no pressure then for what's coming up next. Yes, this is the brand new MX-5, and frankly, you wouldn't blame it for hating its dad right now. I can't think of a car in recent memory that's carried such a weight on its shoulders. It's like the White Album following Sergeant Pepper's, Godfather 2 following The Godfather, Police Academy 6 following Police Academy 5. You can still easily tell which family tree it comes from, but this new MX-5 is altogether more chunky and more muscular. This version, the 2-litre Sport, costs £18,900, 900 more than the equivalent old model. But for that, you get quite a lot more car. It's longer and wider. It has more airbags and options like traction control. That all sounds great, but actually, it could be a bit of a worry. You see, the Mazda MX-5 was always great, not because of what it had, but because of what it didn't have. It was basic and light, and that's what made it nimble and so good to drive. So the question is, has all the grown-up stuff spoiled the show? To find out, it's time to reintroduce the MX-5 to its old friend, the B-Road. First, a bit of culture. When the boffins at Mazda worked on the handling for the new MX-5, they followed the principle of Jimba Tai. Japanese for horse and rider in perfect harmony. That all may sound a bit crouching kitten hidden hippo, but as soon as you drive it, the penny drops. It's as though you and the car are one. 50-50 weight distribution. Rear-wheel drive, simple, direct steering. It is brilliant. The engine in this one, a 2-litre with 158 brake horsepower, takes the car from 0 to 60 in 7.9 seconds. So it's not exactly super fast then, but I'm really not bothered. If anything, that's just an excuse to rev the nuts off. <laughs> This means you have to change gear quite a lot, but in the MX-5, even doing that is a pleasure in itself. You feel so involved. It's a, a short shift. It's snappy and mechanical. and It means you're not just shifting cogs around. You are Terence Stamp on the King's Road in the 1960s. The reason it feels so good to drive is, I think, because the engineers have been such geeks. For example, this new MX-5 is bigger and has more stuff on it, but it weighs just nine and a half kilos more than the old one. And they've done it with really anal stuff, like shaving 84 grams off the weight of this mirror. So, buy two bags of crisps and you've undone all their good work. Think about that next time you're peckish. The fact is, a car can only be great when everyone who's making it is completely clear about what it's meant to be. And that is the case with the MX-5. For example, the engineers agreed they didn't want the new car to have any more grip than the old one. And that says it all. When most companies bring out a new car, it has to have more of everything because more sounds like progress. But this is so simple, so sharp, that suddenly it makes the Z4, the Boxster, the Mercedes SLK look like big, heavy, wallowy, cumbersome things. And why would I pay twice the money of the Mazda to have them? Why? It is then a worthy successor to the old MX-5, 